So let's take a look at another example, Z-transform example number two. This example is a little bit more complicated than the first example we worked because this is a signal that has an infinite number of non-zero samples. So the signal we're going to deal with here is x of k equals alpha to the k times the unit step u of k. And we are going to find the z-transform and region of convergence for this signal. Remember what the region of convergence is. This is a region where the z-transform exists. So ROC is what we mean by region of convergence. So let's start by just writing down the definition of the z-transform. x of z is a sum from k equals minus infinity to infinity of x of k times z to the minus k. That's just the definition of the z-transform. And then we can go ahead and plug in the specifics for our problem. k equals minus infinity to infinity, alpha to the k u of k times z to the minus k. And then since the unit step is zero for all negative time, it turns on at k equals zero, we can let the unit step manipulate the limits of the sum and simplify this to k equals zero to infinity of alpha to the k z to the minus k. So now this is the summation that we need to solve. And we know how to work on things like this. We've been doing things similar to this in the class for some time. If we use our property of exponents, we can rewrite this as alpha to the z to the minus one, all of that raised to the k. That's equivalent to that last step. And now this is in a form that we know how to just write down because we know how to solve a geometric sum. If I want to, instead of writing alpha to the z, alpha times z to the minus one, I could write this as alpha over z. And this might be a, a little easier way to write it because now I know to think about the relationship between alpha and z in terms of whether this sum converges or not. Because that's something we would have to worry about. If this quantity being raised to the k is magnitude larger than one, this sum blows up, we need the quantity alpha over z's magnitude to be less than one for this to actually have a closed form solution. So when we write it in this way, it's kind of easy to check whether this actually converges or not. And it converges as long as that quantity is less than one. If we multiply both sides by magnitude z, we can rewrite this as magnitude of alpha is less than z, which is the same thing as magnitude z being greater than alpha. So this right here is the criteria for this geometric sum to converge. This converges any time the magnitude of z is larger than the magnitude of alpha. So going forward now, when we actually write down the answer for this sum, this quantity right here is what we're assuming is true because it's only under this case that the geometric sum actually exists. So if this is the case, we can actually just use our table and we can write down one minus the quantity raised to the upper counter variable plus one, which would be one minus alpha over z to the infinity, and then divided by one minus alpha over z. Since we're going to assume that alpha over z's magnitude is less than one, this simplifies into one minus zero because alpha over z to the infinity is zero. And then on the denominator, I wrote it as one minus alpha z inverse. If you wanted to, you can multiply top and bottom by z. So this would turn into z over z minus alpha. So whether you like this form or this form, they're totally equivalent, but sometimes different textbooks write the answer in either this form or this form. So what we've done is we have solved for x of z. We have found that x of z is equal to z over z minus alpha for all values of z whose magnitude is greater than the magnitude of a. So there is our answer, that's our z-transform, and this quantity here is the region of convergence. I can actually plot that region of convergence in the complex plane, or the z-plane, however you want to say it. Let's say that alpha, for now, is just a real valued quantity, so it's on the real axis. All the values of z whose magnitude is larger than alpha is the shaded region right here. All these points that I've shaded in orange are outside the circle that has a radius of alpha. So all of these points in the z-plane are the points whose magnitude is larger than the magnitude of alpha. So this is what the region of convergence looks like for this particular problem. This right here, that point alpha, that's what we would call a pole of x of z, if indeed alpha was a real value to alpha. Um, in general, this quantity alpha could be anywhere on this circle if we wanted to deal with a complex value to alpha. 
but in general the spots where x of z blows up, and in this case it's when z equals alpha, because over here on the denominator if I plug in z equals alpha it blows up, that's what we call a pole of the transform. That's a spot where x of z equals infinity. So that wraps up this example. Starting with a discrete time signal x of k, we have computed its z transform, we have found the region of convergence, we have sketched the region of convergence, and we've identified the pole of x of z, which is a spot in the z plane where x of z equals infinity.